What does it mean when an attacker is performing active reconnaissance on our network? What are some of the techniques an attacker will use? In this video, we're going to not only walk through what active reconnaissance is, but we're actually going to perform a demonstration using a common testing tool against a lab target. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses about distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Ultimately, a major goal of an attacker is to have our entire network mapped out. That way they know what the different roles are for each system on our network and how that interacts with our company. As you can see on the screen, these are some of the different attacker methodologies that you're gonna to wanna to review and be somewhat familiar with. Now, these might not be the only ones that you can review, but these will help give you insight in the process of how an attacker operates. In any kind of attack scenario, there's two types of reconnaissance. You have active and passive. So right now, we're gonna talk about active reconnaissance. Now, active reconnaissance is when somebody is directly interacting with our systems and network in order to gain additional information. So what are some of the ways that we can actively map a network and discover targets? Well, the first way is by using network scanning tools, which allow somebody to map out an entire network topology. It can uncover IP address ranges, operating systems, and a whole bunch of other information. Imagine how much easier an attacker will have it if they can see a visual representation of our network. One of the most common tools used for network mapping is called NMAP, which stands for network mapping. However, there's a lot of different tools out there and full featured suites that offer this network mapping capability. Ping is another tool that you might be familiar with in testing network connectivity, but you can also use ping to locate hosts that respond back to us. This lets us use a ping sweep to ping entire subnets to find active hosts. Now, something to keep in mind is that just because a system doesn't respond back to a ping packet doesn't mean that system is down. Some systems like a Windows system might have a firewall enabled that prevents these replies from being sent back. We'll also see this a lot with networking gear like firewalls. Knowing if a system is alive is useful information for mapping a network out, but we also want to determine open ports, operating systems, and services that are running on systems. Vulnerability scanning tools like Nessus and Nmap have this functionality built into them. An important point about detecting open ports is that it's not uncommon if we see services like HTTP running on some obscure port other than the typical TCP port 80. System administrators actually use this technique to throw off script kitties and low risk threats from identifying some low hanging fruit vulnerabilities. OS fingerprinting or operating system fingerprinting is a technique that we can use to determine the operating system of a system. From an attacker's point of view, they wanna know which type of exploits they need to launch. So they really wanna know that operating system to increase their chances of being successful. Obviously, if they find a Linux exploit, they try to launch it against a Windows system, probably not going to work. You can even use the TTL to determine which operating system. For example, Windows versus Linux. Knowing the service and the version number running on a system equally helps to identify potential vulnerabilities that might exist. Tools like Nmap are going to use a technique called banner grabbing, which actually connects out to the specific port, and then it grabs that banner that the system responds with. And in that banner, it might have the service or even the version number. I've already mentioned it several times, but Nmap is one of the most popular tools for performing some of these scanning techniques that we just mentioned. Many Linux systems are gonna either have Nmap installed or we can easily download it for free. In corporate environments, you might see tools like Qualys or Tenable's Nessus for vulnerability scanning because a tool like Nmap does have some limitations. What I wanna do now is take you through a brief demonstration of how Nmap can be used to do things like host discovery, operating system fingerprinting, and detect services and their version numbers that are running on a system. All right, if you are not familiar with this operating system, this is called Kali Linux, and Kali Linux has a whole bunch of security testing tools, and it's typically used for penetration testing, but it can be used for a lot of different security things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Nmap now and the uh, ping and host discovery, OS fingerprinting, service and version detection. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type Nmap 
And this is gonna show us all the different options that we can do. Now it's important to note that some of the options with nmap are going to require you to run them as root. So you might have to do sudo and then nmap and then whatever the command is. So just keep that in mind. If you do have to do that, it will tell you once you try to run the command without root, that you have to go ahead and run it as root. Now, if we scroll up here, we're gonna take a look at some of the different options that we can do. The very first option that we're gonna look at is this dash SN, and that is for a ping scan. Now that is basically a host discovery scan. So what you can do is, if we type nmap dash SN, and then for our example, we're going to actually just type the IP address that we're looking at, but you could also do entire networks. So if we want to do an entire network of the 10.10.10 .10 network, then we could do 10.10.10.0 and then slash 24. So that's the CIDR notation. We could also do a range of IP addresses. So if we wanted to scan one through 20, then we could do that. We could also do one through 20 and then comma 25. So it will scan one through 20 and then it will also scan 25. So Nmap is very, very flexible. But again, we're going to do a specific host. So we're going to do dot three. And we'll go ahead and hit enter here. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and full courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. And you can see that the host appears to be down. That's a very interesting thing because some systems will have firewalls that will block these type of scans and then you won't be able to detect them. So for our example, we know that dot three is up. So when we're actually going to do a scan, we could do dash PN and that will just assume that that host is up. It's not going to try to discover it first. Now, if we scroll back up here, we're gonna look at some more of these options. And the dash O is for OS detection. So that's that operating system fingerprinting. So that's the next step that we're going to do. We're gonna do nmap and we're going to do dash pn. Remember that's because we're gonna treat it as up and then dash o and then our IP address of our target. And as you can see, to actually do the operating system scan, the fingerprinting, we have to run this as root. So we'll go back here and we will type sudo and then keep the same command. And then we have to type our password in here. So as you can see, what Nmap does is it tries to find a fingerprint. It tries to match whatever operating system it thinks it's finding against its known operating systems. So in this specific example, we think it's going to be a Linux operating system, which that is correct. Now, sometimes you might get exact results. Sometimes you might not get very reliable results at all. It just depends on the specific system that you're trying to scan. Now we're going to go back up again and look at the options. And there is a dash SV. So that stands for service or version detection. So now we're going to go ahead and run that scan against that same system. And as you can see, these were the ports that it had found were open. So we'll go back up to that same command. And we'll go ahead and do a dash SV. Now it's important to point out for this, we're not going super in depth with the things that you can do in Nmap. There's a whole bunch of different things that are possible, including certain vulnerability checks. But these are kind of the basics that you really need to be familiar with when you're starting out to use Nmap. Now, as you can see, the service version scan came back. And let's take a look at the results here. So FTP was running on port 21 and the banner, this is the banner grabbing, came back with VS FTPD version 2.3.4. We also have OpenSSH running. We also have Samba running. So this can be very valuable in detecting 
what kind of system or what kind of services are running. Another thing that's useful is you might see certain services that you know are a specific operating system. For instance, if we see IIS running on here, then it's going to be a little bit suspicious because our operating system fingerprinting detected Linux. And obviously IIS is a Windows service. So if you see some irregularities like that, it could be somebody trying to mess with you and putting different banners on certain ports. So just keep that in mind. Now, one last flag that I wanna show you, I'll go ahead and clear the screen here so we can get rid of some of that information, is this dash A. The reason why I bring up the dash A is because it has OS detection, so OS fingerprinting. It has service and version detection. It will run some scripts as well as some other things. So if we do that scan now, we'll go back to this previous scan and we'll change it to dash A. Something to keep in mind is that with Nmap, you have a lot of different options that if you change, you can get different results. So again, just like where we were trying to do the ping scan and nothing came up, and then we did the dash PN flag to treat the host as alive, there's a lot of different things like that that exist in Nmap. So it's definitely worth getting familiar with the tool. And then as you can see, the screen scrolled down quite a bit because it had a bunch more information in there. So if we scroll back up here, we can take a look at this. And you can see in the FTP section here, remember before we had the service and the version. Now we have these scripts that are running. So Nmap has a bunch of these NSE scripts, these Nmap scripting engine scripts. And they basically will check various things. But with that dash A scan, it does run some of these. So that can be very useful. And then you can see on the other services as well that there was similar things here. So with SSH, it had a script that it ran to get the host key. And then if we scroll down here a little bit more, we get a little bit more information about the box. Now, I hope that this demo helped you understand how you can use Nmap to scan different hosts. And this is the same way that attackers scan the victim host that they're trying to attack. Question of the day, taking a look at Nmap and all the options that you can configure, I want you to let me know what are the most interesting options that you find. Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walked through not only what active reconnaissance is, but we also performed a demonstration using a common testing tool against a lab target. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.